welcome to Unstoppable Real Estate Investing Wealth. My name is Billy Alvaro, a.k.a. the Unstoppable VA, former billion-dollar mortgage banker, gone bankrupt, turned professional real estate investor, where each week you'll learn the tools, strategies, systems, and secrets myself and other highly successful real estate investing entrepreneurs use to start, grow, and scale their businesses, creating massive profits, and how you can too. And we'll teach you how to put those profits to work so you no longer have to. Get ready to finally experience financial freedom and generational wealth. Now let's get started. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode, Unstoppable REI Wealth. Super excited to have this guy on here today from the Midwest, Mr. Doug Hopkins. Doug has been investing in real estate for years this dude's doing like 850 deals a year combined in two of the absolute hardest markets out there, Southern California and Arizona. Doug, welcome to the show, bro. Really, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Love seeing it. It's been a long time since I've seen you face to face, man. It's been a while. It has. We, you know, we, we go to those collective genius mastermind groups and uh, I'd only do the West Coast ones and now you're only doing the East Coast ones. So it makes <laughs> it a little hard to see each other, but uh, it's good to see you on here, man. Yeah, you as well. So, Doug, listen, you know, you saw the intro. This business, this podcast is about starting, growing, and scaling. I really want to focus on the scale portion with you because, like, you're crushing it, bro. Like, you are really doing some amazing things. Not only are you doing units, you're doing serious gross volume, net vo net, net revenue. What? Just give us an idea right now of what your organization looks like at this level where you're at doing 850 units a year in two extremely tough markets. What does it look like as far as ops and marketing and salespeople and acquisitions just take us through that gotcha yeah it's it's a pretty big operation you know i, I was a one-man gang for a long long time and uh you know i i realized if to do the numbers i was doing i needed to get some help and that was tough for me um just because I'm, I'm i'm kind of a control freak and uh and uh to give some of the responsibilities away to other people um was you know it was out of my comfort zone uh, but as I did that, I was able to to figure out that, that hey, I, we can really grow and scale here. It's what led me to pick up a partner a partner of mine, Damon Lyons, and uh, he he moved his family out to Southern California. We opened up there in 2010. He's a great guy, by the way. He's a solid human being. Unbelievable. unbelievable. It's it's tough, as you know, to have partners, and he's as good as they come. I never have to worry about anyone stealing a dollar. Uh, you know, or, or not doing the right thing. He's a yeah. workhorse. He does all the, all the great, great things. And that's what you really have to do is you have to surround yourself with, with great people. Because uh, if you if you don't, you you know, you're only as good as your people and, and, and your name. And you have to have good people that are representing you in the way that you you, that you need to be represented. You know, you're in this business, your life, you're, it's all about integrity. And uh, we and I've been doing this since uh, 1999. I was licensed wow. in 19, 1994 as, a, as an agent. And then 99, I started flip, fixing and flipping houses. So it's been, what, 20, 23, 24 years now. Um, it's been a, and you have to excuse me too, that I'm, my office is under construction right now. I say, yeah. I, I, bought a, I bought a house, or we got a house too under construction, but uh, we got uh, some people working out here. Uh, you're good, bro. Stuff, so sorry about that. Yeah, you're all good. You're all good. Yeah, but uh, so, Doug, I know. Look, you and I are on the same page. It, this this whole business is about quality people inside your organization. You could have the best process, you could have the best systems, but if you don't have the best people that's running your organization, you're gonna you're gonna fall fit, flat in your face, right? So, on your people side of your business, let's focus on that for a second. Tell us what it looks like to be at your level at the scale you're at in two very difficult markets. What is your operations? Your, let's start with your sales, right? Because that's what the driving force of the business, sales and marketing. What does your sales flow look like? How many guys do you have? How many people do you have in your sales department? Gotcha. So um, it used to be just one. And let me, I, I work a little bit differently than, than most. So we, we do a ton of uh, commercials, uh, television commercials uh, and radio. So all of our leads are inbound. Um, we're not cold calling or text messaging or doing any of that. So all the leads are inbound. Um, and it's a really high quality, uh, lead that comes in. So, you know, our first, um, first communication, we have, um, four people in our, in Arizona. I'll just talk about Arizona for now. Cause I've run Arizona. We have four people, uh, that answer the phones, uh, from eight to eight Monday through Sunday. So, uh, 
we need to always have, we, we had an answering service for after hours or during the day, and we only had one person working in, but just you're too big to do that. And answering services, you never know where they're going to be from. Yep. You know, we're in Mesa, Arizona, you've listened to the calls and it's like, uh, you're from uh, Massa, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, or it, it was just obvious wow. that we weren't local and uh, had no idea how to, how to have a conversation or just basically message takers of call this person back. So what I really wanted to do was focus on uh, getting some really good people on the phones uh, that could have a conversation and then, and then see who is going to go. Not all of the, the 500 deals we do in Arizona a year are all, they're not all um, fix and flips. Some of them are, uh, are regular real estate transactions. Um, I have my, my intake department kind of figure out whether the people are looking for, you know, every last dollar on the house and they're, you know, try to, try to get, market market uh, uh cost for it um and if that's the case they send out one of our realtors that represents my company which is doughopkins.com um if not either myself or uh four other guys go out so we have four people on the intake we have four people buying homes and we have uh another three people that do just listings um and you know then we have a, a manager that, that kind of manages it all um and it's a, it's a lot to manage, uh, but most of the people that I have working for me have been here for years and years and years are really, really good or came from other organizations and, um, and, and it really makes a difference. But some, I'll tell you what, one of the best guys I have uh, never was in the business before um, and he came on and, and he's, he's our, our number one earner. So he's crushing it, huh? Yeah, absolutely crushing it. You, and, you, give your, uh, you give your people the PI like most of us do? Um, I used to, uh, we haven't ever really had to hire anybody in a while. So, nice. uh, but yeah, I, I can, I can say that we did do, do that. Uh, I can't remember the last person I've hired other than, uh, an extra agent. Cause we just had too much overflow. Good stuff, man. So you have four people on the phone and four acquisition managers and you're doing that much volume in Arizona, 500 transactions. Yep, exactly. So our top guy gets about 30 a month. Um, He's, 30 deals, he's, pretty he's, pretty he's between 25 and 30 all by himself. God, so, that's insane, <laughs> dude. <laughs> it's like 300 transactions himself. Oh, that's that. insane. Okay. Yep. Break it down for me, Doug. Um, how many leads are you driving in a month into your organization, specifically in Arizona? Yeah, we average about 20 a day. 20 leads a day. That's 20 total calls a day, regardless if it's a net lead or it's a phone call or contact coming in. Yeah, it's either a phone call or we have a web lead that we put out there. You can go to DougHopkins.com, fill out a, a web lead. It'll, it'll go to us immediately. People literally press send and they're getting a phone call back within within 30 seconds. So, um, you know, sometimes it'll be a little bit longer, but we try to average under three minutes. So when I first started at CG, to give you an idea, we were averaging about a day to get back to people. God and didn't realize how important speed to lead was. Um, CG helped me put a lot of those processes in place. And so we average, I think it's two, two minutes, 33 seconds. And that's because when a commercial plays, sometimes we'll get three or four leads, you know, and, and we only have usually only have two people on, on call at the, at any given moment. So we have four guys, but they're always, you know, eight to eight Monday through Sunday. Um, we always have two people on duty and then the other two people are, are off at, at those times. So, um, you handle the overflow, you get into commercial and you get like six or seven phone calls at one time. What happens with the overflow with that? Yeah. So if, if people call most, most of our leads that come in are web are web driven. So, okay. um, we try, we answer, I think 90, mm -hmm. I think it was 98.3% of the phone calls that come in between eight and eight. So we don't miss too many phone calls that, that come in because actually there's uh, phone calls are two to one. You're more, more likely uh, by, by about 50 percent, actually, uh, more likely to get uh, that deal than than a regular web lead. So, so yeah, phone calls, are, hot. Phone calls yeah, are hot ones. 100 percent. Yes. And yeah. a lot of people, will, will, they'll be talking on the phone and the phone will ring. And they'll say, hey, listen, I'll have to call you right back. We have a, a, another customer calling in. We'll call you right back. Give me two minutes. Because that call is way more important than the one, or maybe way more important, two to, two to one, whether, you know, if they're, that they're going to sell. I love that you know your stats, man. You know your numbers. Like you're spitting out 98% within 30 seconds and within two minutes and 38 seconds is the max. Like this is what it takes, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to scale your business, if you're listening to this, 
you have to know your numbers. You have to know them like the back of your hand. I mean, Doug, you're running a big operation. You're not deferring it over to your operations guy. If, like, let me get the stats from him. You know your numbers, man. We have to. And, and uh, I have a, like a, a scoreboard on my CRM on, on Salesforce that shows me how many leads came in for the day, how many uh, appointments that we have set, uh, what what our appointment conversion rates are per each each uh, of our intake guys, uh, what my percentage is for closing. Um, I still go to a lot of appointments on the east side. I live in, in uh, East Mesa, which is in, in Maricopa County, just outside of Phoenix area in Arizona. And um, I still go on, on all the East Valley appointments. Um, and I close at a much higher percentage than, than most people because, you know, I'm, I'm on, I got instant credibility. I'm on the commercials. Yep. Out here. Yep. And, and also it's my money. I know what n- number I can put. Can, can pay and what I can play with. And if I push things to get the deal done, I, I'll do that as well, which not everybody can do. It's amazing, man. Tell me about um, your marketing department. What does that look like? How many people in it running on your marketing side? Yeah. So, so um, we have another guy that that's in CG bullseye branding. It was uh, Darren Damey, who I went to high school with. Um, he's, he's actually uh, in charge of all the commercials. We have stats on everything. You talk about uh, knowing your numbers. The guy's amazing at knowing knowing his numbers. Uh, he, he plays uh, every single commercial that that comes in. We track. Uh, we track when the commercial plays and when the leads come in, and we can actually um, see exactly what commercial, what times are working, and we're able to buy spots based on uh, historical data, uh, which which improves our numbers. Once we took it over ourselves from going to just a, a regular. Um, uh, buy buyer, uh, media buyer, yep. uh, our, our, our stats went up over 20%. That's insane. That's insane. If you don't mind me asking, are you willing to, to discuss how much money you're putting out a month in marketing? Um, I think just in, in television last month was 240,000. Uh, I think we did, um, another, uh, PPC. We did another about 50 grand and another 25 grand in radio. So, Somewhere a little over a three hundred thousand dollar mark. Some, uh, I think it's three hundred and twenty-five thousand, something like that. It's a sick return, man. And you're again, you're in one of the hottest markets. You have a lot of competition out there where you're at. Tons. I, it, it seems like uh, uh, Arizona's ground zero for every new <laughs> company coming out. You know, yeah. uh, it was Zillow, one of Zillow's first markets, but they started buying from Open Door, OfferPad. All the big eye buyers, all the um, institutional buyers are here. They're started buying again. Yeah, there's a ton of competition out here. Um, a lot of them copy my exact commercial. It's kind of weird, uh, you know, <laughs> some of my competitors. But, you know, the, the nice thing about TV, the, the nice and the hard thing about it is um, the it, it's it's a lot of money, you know. So to spend that kind of money every, every month, it, it yeah. makes it so that not everybody can do it. Um, and there, there's still a lot of people that, that are doing really good business. They're just doing it a different way, whether it's door knocking, uh, sending out mailers, yep. uh, doing the text message thing, the cold calling thing. Um, you know, everybody's different. Um, we just chose to focus on, on television commercials because the, the barrier to entry is a lot, a lot larger than, than most. But let's focus on that for a second. So on the TV side, you're in a, in a big metro area there. Are you going on? The local cableized stations or are you mainly broadcasting out on the networks got it we are on the networks um we, we spend a ton of money on fox uh we're, we're on all, all the networks um the local uh, station as well there's a channel three here that's not one of the networks but it's a local station here that has news all day long and um you know the news channels we're on, we're on cable tv a ton um ESPN, I watch that. So that's the only time I get to see myself, that or, or uh, Fox News every once in a while. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we try to stay, the news stations work good. And you know, we try to um, stay away from uh, a lot of the, 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 the high end stuff. You know, you'll, you, you'll very rarely see us on a football game. Um, football game, you cost, you know, $25,000 yeah. for one 30 second commercial. So, right. You know, uh, there's a lot of commercials out there that we are on that, you know, charge $100, uh, $50 spots, $10 spots. You know, it depends on where you get. And, you know, we've had, we've we've seen the return on, on those $50 and $100 spots way more than we do on a $25,000 spot. For instance, I went and, and there was a Cardinals game and they were away playing Seattle. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be great. 
I'm, it was going to be my first football game. I, I was expecting, I'm like, everyone be ready, all hands on deck. We're sitting it. My commercial comes on, crickets. <laughs> you know, nobody wanted to. Nobody wanted to do it. They're right watching the game, right? Exactly. They don't want to exactly. sit there real estate, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, they're trying to drown their sorrows with the beer, man. They don't want to be hanging yeah, out. And, exactly, yep. especially because I'm a Cardinals fan. So yes, exactly that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and a Jets fan, by the way, Bill. I'm from New York. Uh, you're a New York guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, York guy. Yeah, I went to. Uh, uh, Fox Lane High School, and you know, lived in Bedford Hills, New York, uh, just north of the city, about forty minutes. I was born in White Plains. Yeah, man, that's that's a solid area up there. Yeah, we're going to start in that area. We're going to start marketing. We've been doing uh, all of Long Island, the boroughs, New Jersey. We're just heading into South Jersey. We're going to start heading into uh, Northern New York. That's like right outside Manhattan, forty-five minutes up, about an hour and a half. Gotcha. Perfect. Yeah, beautiful yeah. area. Yeah, Bedford Hills is awesome. I, uh, used to say the only reason anyone knows or heard about Bedford Hills is because they had the women correctional facility there. That um, oh gosh, what's the, the, the uh, Martha uh, Stewart? Martha Stewart went to yeah. That was, yeah. She was, uh, that was a claim to fame for uh, Bedford Hills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was like a prima donna place up there. So yeah. so pretty funny. Yeah. So your business operational wise, you have a lot of transaction coordinators inside your business that are handling this. What does it look like on the operation side? Yeah, I got. We got two uh, two um, uh, transaction coordinators here in Arizona, and I believe Damon only has one out in out there. Uh, but she is a it's Damon's sister, and she's a workhorse. She's she's awesome. And yeah. She's winning the Damon man. Damon's yeah. a workhorse. The guy's exactly, a exactly. That's family. Yeah. So, yep, and Damon's brother works for us too. He's <laughs> he's a workhorse yeah. and son now, and he's the number one guy there too. I got the whole lines family working here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is crazy, man. So, you know, it's it's um, it's um eye-opening to me on how much volume you're doing, but how you really don't have a lot of bodies inside your organization. You're a real, like, your, your revenue per employee, to me, I haven't calculated, like, but it seems like it's through the roof. It like, is. It is. And most of them are, are um, they're, they get a piece of everything they get. They're not salaried. Now, I do have a couple of the, the transaction coordinators are, are salaried, and but they get a piece. They're not their their salary gets made up with the uh, commissions as well. Yeah, yeah. Not a piece of every deal. Um, but all of my guys, all my realtors, all my sales guys, is just uh, you eat what you kill. And that's the deal. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. So you're you're looking at the way you're running your business. Um, I'm just like you know I just said it. Your your employee costs are very low. What do you contribute in the market that you're in to the success you're having? I know you have your marketing dialed in. I mean, your marketing, Damon, you said it. He's got it dialed in. We, we've taken it. We've saved. We've increased our, our revenue by 20%, decreased our costs. What do you contribute in the market that you're in with the people that you have? And I know it's people, but what kind of training are you giving these people to literally cut everybody else, the competition out, to be doing you know, 500 deals in that market? It's I mean, hats off to you, bro. That's that's one of the toughest markets in the United States. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is. And a lot of the guys that, that I got, I've known for years and years and years. Like uh, Josh is my main guy on the West side. He's the one that's doing anywhere between 20 and 30 deals a month. Um, we met at the courthouse steps, you know, 15 years ago, bidding against each other. Um, and then we started uh, partnering up on on, on deals. And uh, next thing you know, he's, he's working with me. Um, and he does a tremendous amount of business and he, he gets, uh, you know, a, a big chunk of, of what we get on that, that he gets on the West side. Um, so he's about, he's as good as I am at, at being able to figure out, um, you know, what price to pay for, for a home. I think what really helped us, um, cause we're the main guys that are going out and buying, buying the houses and the, we're the main guys in the living rooms of these people. Uh, that's another thing too. Be, being belly to belly uh, is, is is way better than than trying to close on the phone. Now, I know a lot of people do operations where they're, you know, they're remote um, and and doing it cross country or whatever it may be. And and that's just not me. I, I can't do that. I'm I'm a guy that needs to be face to face and get a uh, get a feel for the people. And and really, you know, it's about building rapport and solving problems. And I think I'm really good at that. Uh, same thing with Josh. Um, but, but also knowing your, knowing your numbers as far as, you know, I rehab thousands of homes. 
I can walk in and know this is a $40,000 remodel. This is a $75,000 remodel. This is a $150,000 remodel. Yeah. And I can know it pretty instantly, you know, just by walking around the house. I don't have to do a whole full inspection to know that, hey, you know, this one's going to need, a, you know, a whole cosmetic, you know, a whole cosmetic, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, rehab, you know. Rehab. And, and, you know, I, I can base it off of price per square foot. I can, there's all sorts of different ways to do it. But honestly, it's just walking around, looking, seeing if it needs a roof, if it needs an air conditioning unit, whatever it may be. And then just coming up with a number and and, and taking that off the top and, and then uh, leaving some room in it for, uh, for, for a little bit of a profit. So you are, I, I, you know what I'm amazed? I'm amazed at the size of your business. You're still out there closing deals. Like, tell me about that. Why are you still out in the field closing deals? Yeah, so so Billy, it's a funny story, um, and I'll I'll tell you the truth. Uh, <laughs> not that I wouldn't anyway, but uh, about three four years ago, um, I decided to you know what? Hey, I don't need to work anymore. Uh, I got an operation. I got really great people underneath me. I'm just gonna sit back and and uh, you know be the CEO and and let everybody else uh, work, and I'll just oversee everything, make sure sure everything's going smooth. So about week three, um, I was bored <laughs> out of my skull. And I walk in, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, and I walk into a little local pub. And I sat down, my commercial came on, and on the TV. And uh, the guy next to me goes, man, he goes, I just saw your commercial play. I'm like, yeah, I saw that too out of the corner of my eye. He's like, Man, it's nice to know you're just a regular guy just like us. You're here all the time. Just, you know, I, I see you every day now, you know, sitting in here at three o'clock in the afternoon. You're just one of us. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. No uh, way. I took, I, I took one more sip of the beer. I pushed it back. I ordered the check. And I said, thank you. I haven't been back since. No so shit. Went back in the office and uh, said, that's it. I got had a guy named Adam take over for him. Like, Adam. You're out. I'm back in. There's no way. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> it's in your blood, Doug. I mean, listen, you love what you do. It's obvious. It's all over That's your it. face. You know, calling, you love it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's my calling. It's my passion. You know, it's funny because at the same time, I was, I was frustrated with, you know, I'm like, man, I, I, I've built a really good business and, and I've, I've made a lot of money and, and I'm, I'm set for life. And, but I just felt like I had no purpose. Mm -hmm. and it was really bothering me. And I went to the, the last CG out in, in, in Ocean Ocean City, and or Oceanside, excuse me. And um, I was talking to some people and I'm like, I'm really lost. I don't have a purpose. And, uh, and, and you know, someone told me, hey, go inside and just, I, I had a room overlooking the ocean and everything. He said, go inside and just concentrate on it. And that's what I did. I spent the, the whole um, night just sitting by myself on the patio, looking at the ocean and um you know reading reading stuff on purpose and what i found was i was already living my purpose my purpose is to go out and helping people problem solve build a company where people are really proud to, to work yeah. there that that we create a culture uh that is unmatched any in anywhere that i know of um the people that work for me work for me for years and years and years and years and years they don't leave because they they love what they do. They love being around the culture that we've created, and um, and I say we, not I, because everybody um, everybody contributes to the culture that we have, and um, and I love going out and doing deals. And so I was living my purpose without knowing it, but just defining Amazing. that it was was really made all the. It was almost like a weight coming off of me uh that last cg so i i never know what i'm going to get when i go to a mastermind event uh, i never know what kind of nugget of, of truth or knowledge that i'm going to yeah. gain that was one of the bigger ones for me for sure that's huge when you could really understand what your purpose is and you and in your case you're actually living it that says a lot about how you design your life like that's kudos to you bro that's that's a great way to live yeah, I, I love it because it's, you know, I, I remember the days of working for somebody else and, and looking at the clock and dreading, you know, having to go in at nine o'clock or whatever it is. And and then being at work and looking at the clock and what can't wait till five o'clock rolls around. And man, I, I haven't had one of those days in forever. Um, it, and it's 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 awesome. I don't wake up with an alarm clock. I don't you know, I, I wake up 
just normal, no, no alarm clock, unless I have to catch a flight somewhere then yeah. <laughs> I have to do it. But for the most part, I don't, I don't use the alarm clock and, and every day I don't feel like I'm going to work. I feel like I'm, I'm having a blast. And, and that's why I'm putting all this money into my, my office because I spend a lot of time in the office and I yeah. want this to be uh, the place to work in, in all the East Valley uh, for, for anyone who wants to work doing real estate. Uh, it's going to be seven, 7,500 square feet of awesome. Of yeah. awesomeness. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, with you being out in the field and you being one of the top, you know, sales guys in your business, do you have somebody running your company, an operator who's inside running the day to day? I do, yes. Yes. His name is Dylan Martin and he's been he's been helping me out tremendously. It was Darren, but Darren had a he's got like three other businesses and so uh, and, and, you know, just buying all the, all the commercials for Damon and myself, and then a, another 40 other companies around, mm -hmm. around the country, um, he got too busy for it. So Dylan's has stepped in and, uh, basically become my COO and, uh, you know, dealing with all the, the problems with CRM problems or issues and, uh, with the phones or something like that, any, any sort of issues that come up or problems, um, or, or trends, you know, just going over numbers, seeing what, Hey, we're, we're increasing, we're decreasing, uh, not the amount of leads that are coming in our, um, our cost per lead is going down or up or, you know, all those numbers going over those, uh, every, every other day, um, just to make sure we're on top of it. And we could see if, if something is a trend or if something is just a, an aberration. This is great, bro. Honestly, I, you know, I could spend six hours talking to you about what you're doing and how you grow your business, man. <laughs> it's, it's impressive, Doug. You're an impressive guy. You're down to earth. You're a real person. You're a caring person. You're a giving person. I really appreciate you coming on the show today, bro. Is there anything you want to leave the audience that's listening? Like any final thoughts, final words, maybe about mindset or about overcoming or just any last knowledge you, can, you might want to share? Yeah. You know, it, it goes back to I, I every morning I walk four and a half miles. And uh, what I do on those four and a half miles, I, I wouldn't trade for anything. And, it, and that's um, just listening to podcasts like this, um, trying to always get better. You know, it's Tony Robbins, uh, I think, quoted that, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying. Yep. And I think about that all the time. I think about all the people that I pass by on my, on my way up. Uh, all the people that, uh, you know, that were in the business that are no longer in the business anymore. And that drives me because I don't want to be that guy that gets passed by. Um, you know, I don't want to, I, I always want to get better. I always want to learn more. Um, and, uh, but I, I remember uh, feeling the whole reason I, I joined CG was because I got called an OG on stage. Um, and I, didn't even, I didn't know what an OG meant. <laughs> I, I had no idea. I'm like, what did you guys call me? And, and, uh, I, you know, I did, I had absolutely no idea what that meant. And, um, and I'm like, wow, maybe I am getting passed by. I'm one of those guys that's getting passed by. And so I, um, it, it, that's one of the things that drives me. I never want to be that guy getting passed by. I want to be because I decided to retire and that's it. Yeah, man. Good <laughs> last words, bro. Doug, keep, on, keep on growing. That's what I'm saying. And, 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 uh, and know that the only constant in real estate is change. And so you gotta, you, you just gotta keep on top of things and, and try new things and invest in your business, invest in yourself. Do not spend all the money you make because there's going to come, come times that, you know, it's, it, and we've seen that over, you know, last year. Last you know? couple years, yeah. yeah last, the first part of last year was great. The second half, horrible, you know, so things change and you gotta, gotta be on top of it and uh, always be learning, always be getting better. Embrace the change, bro, because change is inevitable. It's going to happen. It's For it's sure. always happening. And a lot of people who get into this business or in life, they can't handle when change happens. But it's all part of the process, all part of the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Doug, thanks for your time, bro. Really appreciate you. Thanks, my man. I appreciate it. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you, bud.